everyone, my name is Sydney and today I'm going to be telling you guys about something called Herb de Chien Palsy. So Herb de Chien Palsy is an injury here to the nerves in the brachial plexus. Which travel down the arm and innervate the muscles. Okay, so this palsy presents itself with internal rotation, elbow extension, and adduction. We can see that here on the skeleton with this internal rotation here and elbow extension and adduction. So what's actually going on right here? Let me get my actual brachial plexus. Whoa. All right, so here we have the brachial plexus. On this side, we have the roots, C5 through T1, the cords in the middle, medial, lateral, and posterior, leading over here to our peripheral nerves. But there's a part right here, the trunk division, where the superior trunk is what's affected in or descent syndrome. Okay, so here we have the whole brachial plexus drawn on the board. Starting over here with our roots, we have five roots coming off of the spinal cord, C5 through T1. Then moving over here, which is the most important part that we were talking about, the upper, middle, and lower trunks. All right, moving over here, we have the divisions, which are kind of all over the place with anterior and posterior divisions. Then moving over here, we have three cords, which were the lateral, posterior, and medial cords. We can see here on the brachial plexus model, the posterior cord going kind of posteriorly to the other two. And then lastly, we have the peripheral nerves which are the musculocutaneous nerve, axillary, median, radial, and ulnar nerves. All right, and then right over on this side, we have the muscles that they innervate, and we'll get to that later. Circling back to the Herb du Chien syndrome, we know that the superior trunk is what's affected by excessive stretching here, either an injury as an adult or something like childbirth. But what spinal nerves compose this trunk? All right, we can see here that C5 and C6 are what compose the superior trunk. So as we know in the medical field, where the injury occurs is not always how it presents itself. Here we can see the nerves traveling and crisscrossing all the way over to these two nerves and affecting these muscles. So although the injury is occurring here, these two travel all the way down and are affecting the function of all of these muscles. All right, so with the loss of function of these two nerves, we also will lose the function of these muscles. So in Herb Duchenne syndrome, our arm will automatically sit in this position instead of like this. Is there a skeleton around here? Perfect, this is exactly what we needed. All right, let's start with the axillary nerve. So here we can see nerves C5 and C6 coming out posteriorly. Here's our axillary nerve, which will innervate the deltoids and the teres minor. All right, so both of these muscles will do external rotation. And since we're losing the ability of the axillary nerve, our arm will fall into internal rotation instead. So since these muscles are no longer doing external rotation, they will, our arm will fall into internal rotation instead. All right, so what else do these muscles do? The deltoids here will do arm abduction. So with Herb Duchenne syndrome, 
our arm will fall into adduction instead. All right, moving on to the musculocutaneous nerve. That nerve is gonna innervate both the biceps brachii and the brachialis. Both of these muscles will do elbow flexion. So in Erbjersen syndrome, we're gonna see the arm fall into elbow extension. All right, so in summary here, Erb Duchenne syndrome is an injury to the superior trunk, which is composed of both C5 and C6 roots, which has an effect on both the musculocutaneous nerve and the axillary nerve, which affects all these muscles. Since these are muscles that aren't gonna be innervating, we're gonna have internal rotation adduction and elbow extension. All right, so that's been our video on Herb Duchenne syndrome, and I could really use a snack now. Oh, sweet, my favorite. <laughs>